A uh, spinal cord stimulator is a medical device that's implanted in a patient uh, with an operation. So everything lies under the skin. What it does is it gives electricity around about the nerves in the spinal cord or just next to it. What this does is it helps to dampen down the pain signals that are coming, for example, from the legs or the back up to the brain where people feel it. When these pain signals are dampened down, a person with the spinal cord stimulator should feel less symptoms such as pain. Yeah. Uh, traditional spinal surgery aims to decompress nerves that are being physically compressed, such as from a disc or wear and tear changes in the spine. In selected people, this is highly effective. Uh, however, it does cause a structural or physical change in the spine, albeit one that's usually well tolerated. However, in many patients, uh, the pain is not clearly uh, related to compression of individual nerves. Uh, or symptoms have not fully improved after apparently successful spinal surgery. In this case, spinal cord stimulation seeks to dampen down these pain signals in a highly individual manner that's bespoke to that patient with the goal of making that patient feel better and have an improved quality of life. Uh, spinal cord stimulation is minimally invasive and it doesn't cause that physical change to the structure of the spine. And if need be, it can be fully reversible. Well, first of all, the mainstay for all patients is good pain management and exercise, which is often guided by a physiotherapist or pain physician to start with. For traditional surgery, spinal surgery that is, candidates are often those with a clear physical cause uh, for their symptoms uh, that appear very highly related. However, in many cases, this isn't so clear cut. Even with apparently good cases, there's still a chance of having a less than satisfactory outcome. If pain is severe and persistent, spinal cord stimulation can be an option. We know it works best in specific types of pain, usually those of nerve origin, but we can discuss that with you and with your specialist. Uh, patients for spinal cord stimulation may have had traditional spinal surgery or other surgery before, uh, but this isn't uh, absolutely mandatory or necessary. Uh, with spinal cord stimulation, our aim is not to fully cure pain, but it's to dampen it down to a sufficient level that patients feel better, they can return to normal activities that have been impacted by the pain, and that this should then lead to an improved quality of life, which is what we all hope for. Uh, to be able to assess patients, uh, the best way we've found to do this is part of a team where you meet multiple members and we all have a specific contribution, then we discuss what would be the best uh, or most appropriate uh, options to offer. Uh, traditional spinal surgery is safe, with about 1 in 20 people having a complication. However, sometimes these can be severe, and there's always that 1 in 100 chance of a permanent nerve in injury. There's also this chance of it not being effective even in well-selected cases and through no fault of anybody's. And finally, traditional spinal surgery does cause that physical structural change in the spine, which can be well-tolerated, but then sometimes cannot be, and that might require further surgery and cause further symptoms. On the other hand, spinal cord stimulation is minimally invasive and fully reversible. It can be done as a day case procedure under general anaesthetic if wished, or even under sedation. It's really not that uh, major surgery in this regard. Uh, there's a potential to trial spinal cord stimulation first, whereby we can put the leads in uh, just through the skin percutaneously. So that's like having a drip or cannula in your back and these are then connected to a battery that you can just wear on your belt and you can see what the benefits are like. At the end of this trial, the leads are taken out and we can discuss putting in the full implant if that's what's wished for. In terms of benefits of spinal cord stimulation, we're looking at reducing pain by over half and hopefully up to at least 80%. However, there's still about 1 in 10 people who doesn't quite get that full benefit. Uh, complications are rare with a 1 in a 1,000 chance of nerve injury. Therefore, spinal cord stimulation is lower risk, but still be highly effective, even in selected people who are not suitable or have had an unsatisfactory outcome from traditional spinal surgery. Traditional spinal surgery can be day case, uh, but often requires a night or two in hospital. Back pain is definitely present after surgery, and it'll be there for at least a few weeks, uh, 
and may even last a few months while the healing is taking place. Normally a return to full activity waits for about three months or so and when patients are reviewed in clinic. The longer term outcomes are good, but there can be issues with persistent back pain, residual symptoms that haven't fully improved or new problems related to the surgery itself. And this is contrasted with spinal cord stimulation where recovery is fast with almost all patients going home the same day and requiring really minimal uh, pain relief. Therapy can be started straight away too. And uh, these, these days we're aiming for a reduction in pain of at least 50% and hopefully up to 80% in uh, most patients. Uh, but there's still that one in 10 who don't quite get that full benefit. Outcomes uh, are good long term too and robust to time. Um, for example, the new batteries last over 10 years, um, but people still come back for replacement saying how well the therapy is working and we replace them. Uh, when patients have a spinal cord stimulator, it's key to know that uh, we are all committed to long term follow up uh, to troubleshoot any issues and ensure the best outcomes over time.